All right, guys, so the next thing that we're looking at now is pedigrees. You guys should have in your possession a page that looks like this. These are also attached on Google Classroom for you that are filled in. So if it's easier for you to go fill them in before you watch the video, please do so. Or stop the video somewhere along the way and make sure that you guys fill it in. Um, so the pedigrees that we're looking at today, just so that you are aware, are going to help you guys answer the last two pages of your big genetics packet. So pages uh, 10 and 11. At that point, you guys should hopefully be done the packet. The packet will be due on April 3rd to Google Classroom. So you guys will kind of take pictures of them and upload them onto that particular site. Don't forget your genetics test is on the 7th. So pedigrees is something that you guys should remember for first year bio as well. It's kind of like um, family trees. We can go through and see how a disorder or a trait got passed along within a family. So the biggest thing is what your key is going to look like and what um, is being represented on the particular pedigrees. So the first thing that you guys are going to see are these circles and squares. And what you guys should realize is that your circles will always, always, always be females. I don't care what book you're going to, what class you have, circles will always be females, squares will always be males. So if we're looking at my first um, circle and square up here, there's a horizontal line that goes between them and they're connected in the middle. That means that individuals one and two that I have labeled here, this male and this female, they are married um, together. There's then the line that goes down and another horizontal line that will connect some of the circles and squares from the top. That means that these particular individuals, numbers four, six, seven, and eight, are the offspring of individuals one and two. Not individuals three, five, Three and five are married into the family. And I know that because there's no line coming from the top of them leading to these two particular individuals. So you'll know your generations. So I just said these are the parents and then these are the children and the next generation would be the grandchildren. So off to the side, you may see Roman numerals and it's talking about generations one, two, and three. And it can keep going from there if you have more generations than that. You'll usually see your individuals numbered as well. So I could say generation one, individual one. What is my genotype? What is my phenotype there? And still go through. Sometimes your numbers may start over depending upon what you guys are looking at. So I could say individuals one and two, and maybe it starts again, one, two, three, just different generation number, just so that you guys are aware. The next thing that you guys are going to be looking at is whether or not those circles and squares are shaded in or whether they are not shaded in. And that shaded in area means that that particular individual is going to have the trait that's being studied. So if I have a circle that is filled in, it means it's that female with a trait or disorder. If I have a male that's completely filled in, it's going to be a male with that trait or disorder. If you see something, you guys will see one of them within this packet example wise that's half filled in. That means that that particular individual is heterozygous. Um, usually we'll see that with like sex length. Maybe they're a carrier. They're still normal, but they're carrying that recessive gene that goes through. Um, sometimes you guys may see little diamond shapes, such as this shape here. That means that as they were going through and they're creating this particular pedigree, maybe they knew they had a particular child, but they weren't sure if it was male or female. Um, sometimes you guys will see twins. So instead of having um, two individuals like this, let's say individuals one and two had twins, instead of them being connected at the top, that line would go down and connect them at the bottom. Um, so a lot of different ways that you guys could see this information, but this is pretty much your standard key on that. So this front page, I'm going to kind of switch, it's going to be the same page, actually goes through and talks about Huntington's disease. And that was one of the disorders within that human karyotype packet that um, we looked at yesterday. And within this, this Huntington's disease, first thing you guys got to look for is what is my key for Huntington's disease? And if you guys remember, should remember, Huntington's is an autosomal dominant disorder. That means big H, big H is someone who has Huntington's or the disorder. Big H, little h is also someone who has Huntington's. Little h, little h, my recessive is actually going to be my normal there. So if we're looking at that and we go through, I know that all my shaded in individuals have the particular trait or disorder, in which case is going to be Huntington's. So I have to go through and figure them out. Are they big H, big H? Were they big H, little h? I'm not quite sure. But what I do know is that all of my unshaded ones are going to be my normals. So they are going to be little h, little h. So the first thing I would do is I would start and fill in all my unshaded ones on this particular problem and say they are all normal, they are all little h, little h. Then I have to go back and I have to look at all my shaded in individuals because I know that they are either going to be big H, big H, or big H, little h. And I have to kind of go through and do some punished squares, maybe off to the side, piece of scrap paper. 
So for instance, if I didn't have this one filled in, I would go, okay, mom is normal. She's little h, little h. Dad, we're not quite sure about. He's one of my two choices here. Let's look at their offspring. Oh, they have a normal son. So just by looking at that normal son, I know that one of the little h's is coming from mom. One of the little h's has to come from dad, but we know dad's not normal. So he has to be big h, little h. Once you have that, you can go ahead and do a Punnett square if you can't do the rest in your head of what my children look like. What does this one look like? What does this one look like? What does this one look like? Do a Punnett square, see what you have. I know they all have the disorder. They cannot be big H, big H because mom does not have a big H gene to give them. Dad's giving them the little h gene. So all the ones that are shaded in have to be big H, little h. But like I said, if you're not sure, go through, do a quick little punted square off to the side if you need to see what those possible children could be. And you're going to keep working your way down on that. My advice, start with that first generation. That's going to give you guys the most information that you have about the entire pedigree. It gives me information about these, and I have information about these. I don't want to start down here. I don't have who they're married to or what their siblings may look like. So I have the most information about generation one as I work my way through this. There may come a time where you guys don't have enough information. I'm just making this up because we know who this is. But let's say we go through and we're not sure. Maybe it's big H, big H or big H, little h because I don't have enough information on this particular individual. If you are not sure, you cannot just pick one or the other. You have to show both genotypes there. So I can say, oh, well, this individual may be big H, big H or big H, little h. I'm not sure. When they get married, when they have children, maybe we'll be able to figure out from there. But you can't just pick one or the other if you're not given that information. If you guys flip to that next page, on the back, you guys will see another um, pedigree there. And this particular pedigree is for cystic fibrosis. Now, cystic fibrosis is an autosomal recessive trait. So now my key kind of changes a little bit. My normals are big F, big F, big F, little f. So my recessive trait is that genetic disorder of cystic fibrosis. So I know that all my shaded ones are going to be that recessive trait here, which is cystic fibrosis. They're showing the trait of cystic fibrosis. So they are all going to be little f, little f. Then I have to go back and look at these and look at all my unshaded males and females. So once again, start at that 